Okay, welcome back to the shop. Uh, it's the following weekend now. We took a little time. It's kind of how it goes. Day job gets in the way. A little bit of a recap. We got the legs really rough shaped. They got... There's a part of me that says it's a little thin here and they flex a bit. But then there's another part of me that says all of this is going fairly heavily getting removed. So it's going to be lighter anyways. So I'm not too worried. It's thick enough to be supportive and structural. Um, we're going to go continue along <clears throat> we're going to continue along shaping i think um i've got it tilted up now so that i can get to some of the undersides a little bit better um, at some point i'll probably flip it completely over and figure out a way to hold it so i can get the the real back of these things taken care of but for the most part we're just going to keep going at it like we did i think the cuts all disc is a perfect tool for this job because it's it's aggressive but it's it's there's this it's the right combination of slow and aggressive it allows me to be pretty rough with it and take a lot of stock off quickly fairly quickly but also it's not so fast and aggressive that I shoot past what I'm aiming for sometimes so I think I'm happy with that um, so what I'm gonna do now is get my safety gear back on and hearing protection and we'll just come come at it a little bit more um, I feel like just going for it and hit, just taking what's in my mind and go until I got there isn't really helpful to you guys. I feel like I need to tell you what's in my head and why I'm thinking or why I'm doing things and what the thought process is about why I'm doing it. Um, I started with the legs because, actually, I started here. I went to the legs because I burned through on one side and I said, ah, it makes me angry. And then this leg was easier to reach and then this leg over here was the next easiest. So I'm kind of just going with what I have the best access for. Um, I think I have an idea for how to f solve going through the, the peg holes or the pin holes on this. Um, I'll share that at some point as well. Um, so I'm thinking I will do a little bit more describe what's in my head I'll stop a few times um, it's gonna be really dusty it's just the way it is but. and so some of what I'm thinking about is that I need to get around that in the fear of going through these holes I'm trying not to find the holes on these and so I'm leaving these areas really bulky right now and I'm just gonna gingerly take them down so that they smoothly fit and transition into this shape really well um, until then, I'm kind of leaving them, they're really bulky up here because I'm kind of scared of going through. Um, and then the way this was tilting is it leans a little bit to one side. So I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna take a little scallop out of the, the whole shape right now. This center trunk looks really straight. It isn't perfectly straight, but it looks a lot straighter than I'd like it to. Um, so I'm gonna take a little scallop out of the entire contour on this side. A little bit on this side and then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some on this side so it can be kind of a bulge so that it kind of looks like it's curving that way it's more of an s curve than a straight line it still leans that way but it's more of an s curve towards that direction so I can do some of that on this side here and then I can do some more on the other side um, I, I think what I'm gonna do because I've already gone through this one rather than fix this one right now I'm gonna go through all of these get everything as close to shape as I can because if I happen to burn through a second one I'll be mad that I'm solving the same problem again so if I just leave that let that sit there and annoy me to keep reminding me not to go through it on the other joints um, and then afterwards any of them that I've gone through I'll come up with repair um, that is a, a reasonable uh, a reasonable solution as a repair there um, I think I know what I can do for that um, yeah, so I'm going to put on the gear again and, uh, and get after this once more. A lot of what's going on, or a lot of the decisions are getting made right then and there while I'm watching the, the way it removes, the way the wood removes, the way things hold together, the way, you know, how thin the shapes start to look and whether or not I take too much off blindly or whether I do okay. Um, I think I'm going to cut a little more out of this make that foot feel a little more downward um, but overall I'm pleased it's coming along the nice thing about having a shape in your head is you can change it anytime you want <laughs> so to, to mesh with reality a little better um, and so yeah I think I'll just put on the gear and we'll get 
we'll get going again. Um, this is going to be a lot of shaping is what it's going to be. So, all right, let's get it done. So move the camera, maybe this will work. I don't know, you might end up getting dust in your faces. I'm not sure yet, but. So I really took a bunch off of here. I found a wormhole and I started to sort of chase it. And so I got real thin right here, but I think it's gonna be fine. There's still, it's four inches wide over here yet. I'm a long way from anything that I'm worried about. I think I just found where that, yep. Yeah, okay, so that wormhole is gonna keep going about another two inches in. I just found the exit hole. So I'm gonna leave it. There's a couple more here. So we're gonna use those as uh, cosmetic features, I guess. Best way to say that. So we're going to go for a curvy thing on this side. I'm taking a bunch off of this top section. I think I'm going to start... Uh, I think I'm going to flip it around. Flip it around this way and work the other side a little bit so I can kind of get these two shapes to blend a bit better. A bit more. Um, this little horn can get a lot thinner. I did hit I did hit steel right here. Or I guess that's epoxy, it's not steel. I just barely stopped ahead of that, which is pretty good. I'll work out how to deal with that at some point. Um, yeah, so far we're coming along. Making a big mess. There's a quarter inch of sawdust on the floor all the way around this thing. <laughs> so it's coming along. I might have to move you. This this might be too dusty for that camera. But I'm going to try it there for now and see what happens. But, yeah, keeping going. We should have it pretty well shaped today, hopefully. All right, off we go. Okay, well, that was a dusty task. Um, so it's a lot lighter than it was, and it sits just right. I put the top on it and took a couple of pictures. Um, it's about as thin as I dare go with any of the members. They're all kind of springy. The feet, the legs are a bit springy, so I'm going to kind of leave those as is. Um, there are a couple areas where I popped through. The first ones where I popped through the holes. This one I found, I found a little hole here. But as luck would have it, 
and might have a very easy out solution. Right here, here, um, there were a couple of spots. There's one back in there too. There were a few spots where I hit some wormholes or some insect holes, some bug holes of some sort. And so those are going to have to get filled anyways. So for at least a couple of these, I believe I'm safe to uh, treat them as insect holes and fill them the same way. These up here, there's three of them. I'm thinking I'm going to put a, a dowel into some of these and try to shape some sort of little nub or, uh, you know, like the nib of a branch that had started but never really took off before the tree was cut. Something like that. At least that's sort of my first initial idea. Um, so, as it would happen, I have plenty of oak sawdust at this point. There's about a half inch of it on the floor here, all over. It's pretty much everywhere. So what I figure I can do is f make up a sawdusty paste to, uh, to fill those holes with. And I figure I'm also, I think, oh, hold on, let me show you. I'm thinking I'm going to also, because it's a finer piece, I'm going to fill all of these holes with something. Probably this sawdust and stuff, maybe, I'm thinking. Just plug them all, and then I might put a veneer over the top of all of this, just to kind of conceal and, you know, make for a better, um, hide that sort of stuff, I guess, is what I'm thinking about, is try to hide that stuff. So we've got a few holes so we're going to fill, and I think I'm just going to, yeah, thinking my plan is I'll just uh, mix up a very good big batch of sawdust and epoxy because I'm going to use the, the slow set stuff and then I can come back and sculpt it a little bit. Um, I'm going to pick it out of the wormhole areas too. Pick what's in there out. Yeah, because that's just dusty. So I'm going to set, get set up to do that and then I'll bring you back. Alright, so I got this little scrap of some of this oak here. I'm just going to slice off a couple of strips that are maybe a three quarter inch wide or so just to make for um, plugs. So, yeah. out of a plug or two from it and we'll cut them off you know, we'll just get a cross section that's a chunk here just put the fence out of the way here let's do a nice thick spot here and the same on uh, this head that'll be enough probably get both plugs out of that but we'll make a second one just in case the color looks better this way. since I've turned, probably two years maybe since I turned it. No, I used to lay it a little while ago, not bad. I don't turn very often. Um, all I've got is this little seven by, I think it's a seven, whatever it is. It's a mini lathe, the jet mini lathe from a few years ago. And uh, I think it's a, actually it's a eight. I think the max I can turn is like a 10, it's a 10 by 14 if memory serves. Anyway, doesn't matter. I've got these little sticks of oak in here, this little stick. Um, I'm set up in the lathe, and I'm just going to go after making sort of kind of a tapered dowel so that I can push it into the hole and then slice off a bit. And All right, so we're just going to start turning. It's been a little while. I've got my skew, a little half-inch skew. I'm not going to do a real turning uh, t instructions here. I'm just going to go after it. It's just here's how I use the skew to get this job done. So. since I've turned. I'm going to go check the fit on this real quick. Alright, so now we've got a, pl 
plug I can throw into this spot. Maybe I'll use this plug, it's a little thicker. And then there's one I can throw over here. I'm going to have to pull it out. I've got a little bit of epoxy that's kind of in my way there on that spot. But I think I can get that in there to kind of fill that area. That'll be, I'll cut it off extra long and then I can taper things in nicely. So that's the plan anyway. Yeah, that'll work in there. I just got to clear out a little bit of space there for the for the uh, epoxy to go. Yeah. I might fill this one with sawdust because we're not to the end of the hole here. This really wants to go like this. But there's a ledge there, so I might just fill that with sawdust and this one as well. I think this might just be the one we use here. So there's that. And then the other bit of this is we take a bunch of sawdust and epoxy and put it in here. I guess it's about that time, huh? All right, let's get going. That's been about a minute. I should have grabbed some gloves. Just shove that into there, I think. Get it all mushed in there. Do the same to that hole. It should. Okay. Do a, just shove the plug in. It's good now. We're just going to dump a crap load of yellow glue in here. So I'm going to go grab my jug o glue so we have at least a decent amount of adhesive involved and then yeah there's no reason for that to be anything fancier than yellow glue I don't say just take oh I don't know however much that was maybe an ounce and a half okay. and then pile it in literally a big handful. Stir that together to make a mess. I was going to grab gloves too and I forgot. But this will paste in nicely. I'm going to go grab gloves. I think I have time with this glue I think. I'm going to use my hands here now to finish integrating it. Yeah, It's like a mud pie. I'm just shoving it in there. Oh yeah, this is lots of glue in it. I can feel it sticking to my skin, my fingers, which is perfect. Just shove a little more in there. Probably could have used a bunch of other methods. I probably could have cut plugs for all it mattered, but this will do. This will do just fine. <laughs> So, we'll call that good. Throw this stuff away before it sticks itself to the bench. Um, so that's pretty much, the body of this thing is pretty well shaped. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with what it came out to be. I'm pretty pleased actually. So we're, we're going to call that enough for today. Um, and I just... I did that to wipe, to keep my hands clean with the gloves, and then what I do, touch it. Smart. All right, that's good. We're going to call that enough for today. When it's dry, we'll come back. All right, good morning and welcome back. It is Thanksgiving Day, so happy Thanksgiving a week or so late. Now it'll be a little more than a week. It'll probably be a month later. Merry Christmas, probably. <laughs> that may come out surprisingly true to life. Um, so the epoxy and the glue is all dry on the front and the back. The front looks fine. I think we'll be all right there. The back is a bit bumpy. Um, I was worried that that Type Bond 2 was not going to dry real fast or real well or shrink or crack, and it didn't. It's really quite hard. should be good. Um, my next thing is to flatten that out and smooth all these surfaces. Um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge since I can't hold it very well. Um, 
So what I'm going to try to do is come up with some fixture of sorts to uh, get a grip on this in a way that will allow me to at least hit it with a plane and maybe scrape the maybe scrape the surface. I'm just going to try to find a find a way to hold on to this thing. I think if I put a put a block there and then I could clamp down on it somehow. I've got to find a place that it's safe to clamp on it too. Uh, that's a bit short. That could work if I can hang on to it safely. That could work. We might go with that. So yeah, we're going to work out a a way to hold on to this thing somehow. I don't think these are going to be able to reach it though. And still grip. Can you grip there? I doubt it. Yes, you can. All right. Well, that might work. Let's see about this side now. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere. So now I can at least chooch on it a little bit and see what happens. See if Dave's famous plane we can destroy its blade real good. Okay, it's cutting. It's gonna take a little while. It's actually cutting reasonably well for for being mostly glue here. I guess it's mostly sawdust. Just this plane is set really light, so it's going to take a while. Um, I think I'm going to look for a quicker reduction method. Probably not quite as aggressive as the cuts all wheel, but something in that vicinity. So I'll bring you back when I figure that out. All right. Yeah. I, everything else I have is either set too shallow or it's far too aggressive. Like the cuts all wheels and stuff are too aggressive. Um, I might be able to go at it with the random orbit sander, but I'm worried about deflattening this back this back face this is the one of the few straight pieces I need to stay straight and if I did deflatten it then I'd have to run it over the joiner and that would suck or come up with a better way to flatten it I have to reflatten it so I'm going to try not to lose the flatness here so I'm just going to go with Dave's famous block, uh, wooden crown V plane and uh, just go after it so this will be fairly boring it's going to take a little while because it is kind of slow going because it's a somewhat fine set but it's also letting me see how well cured this uh, Type on 2 got over the last few days. It's had about five days, four days to, to set up, so it shouldn't be too bad, but you know, you never know. And uh, just keep after this here. Give you some beautiful music here for a little while. They're pretty much level now. Um, they're still a little squishy, so I'm gonna leave them to dry, but if I wanted to, I could probably put the veneer on here if I was going to not entirely decided on whether I want to even do the veneer. Um, I may not. I may, uh, I may just leave it like this. This isn't bad. They kind of look like knots. So I'm gonna flip us and uh, Start working on these epoxy spots. Epoxy spots, these are going to probably just take the rasp at this point. So, what I'm thinking is I'd kind of like to be able to stand it up. I'm going to need to work out my work holding for this. Actually, you know what? No, I think I do like it laid flat, like so. And, uh, We'll work this one since it's the biggest one first. And just go and grab a rasp or two. All right, so we're gonna get a sense of how the epoxy feels with the color on this as well. Just got a rasp. And this first one is that branch deal that I just need to shrink quite a bit. And I think I can do that slowly and gently with the rasp.
see that shit? I was just tapping the dust out of it in the cheap shitty Harbor Freight uh, file cracked and you can see it's been cracked for a while. Look at the, uh, the discoloration there. See how it's dark on one spot? That meant that crack's been there a little while it looks like. Well, that's a reason to go buy better files right there, isn't it? Damn. Well, I guess it's a good opportunity to point out where I, uh, where I am so far. Um, I've got the, the little nib thing got shaped. And I basically have this upper part of this, bar, this from about here on, from about here to here, it's pretty much in its final shape. I have a little more sanding to do. I can see the lines from the files. I'm going to have a lot of sanding to do. But this is sort of the, the look I'm going for, this, this sort of sculpted, uh, smooth, very nice, um, inviting to be felt, I hope. Um, that's at least the plan so far. So, I guess I'm going to have to pick up some new files. Um, and at this point, I'm going to take a quick break for some lunch and uh, put some more photos up. But, yeah, so far this is going all right. Um, this might be one of the easier legs. I think maybe the feet, one of these arms. This arm and these legs are probably the easiest. The hard one's going to be this arm here. Um, but, you know, we're... Getting there, the transitions are nice, the way I was ask, a, expecting and envisioning. Um, it's just a lot of work because it's white oak and it's hard and it takes a while. Uh, I think new files will help with that. I might pick up a couple more rasps while I'm at it. Rasps. Raspethid. So, but yeah, we're going to keep on trucking here. See if we can't uh, get further shaping after lunch here. So, anyway. Alright, well, I got most of the swirls out. This oak takes forever to sand. So I pulled out the power sander because I'm lazy and not that patient when it comes to that much sanding. But overall, the, sh the shape is curved. The curve is fair and feels smooth. There's a few spots that will still need a little bit of love. Like this spot right there, my fingers just found. But overall, the, the general shape is good. Since I've got this leg in the air, I'm going to go after this one next. Um, this time, we'll just start at it with the spoke shaves here. All right, well, I had the camera aimed the wrong way while I was talking a minute ago, so we'll get it again. Just taking the spoke shave after these feet now. And I like the spoke shave because it's a little faster. It leaves a smoother surface behind. Despite the fact that it's a faceted surface, it's it's easier to get fair and clean. It's easier to clean up with a file when it's like this instead of with a rasp. The thing I dislike about the rasp is that it leaves behind a really scratched up surface. With, with this oak, that scratched up surface is really hard and time consuming to clean up. So I'm happier doing the spoke shave here as long as it can reach. Like in here, I can't get inside these corners because they're too tight. But anywhere else I can get it, I will gladly use the spoke shave. And just uh, peel away. Try to get it nice and fair like I've been doing here. areas where I'd like it to get but it won't get so I will have to rasp that but 
for the most part, I think we can just do like these. So we'll just keep uh, keep going after this. And I'm finding the little divots that were left by the power disc, by the cuts all. So I'm trying to get those smooth, ease those transitions. The neat thing is it seems that either this wood is really so well behaved that it's cutting in both directions, but for the most part I'm not getting hung up on grain direction. I can go either direction. See, this is pretty aggressive here. I can still do the same this direction. And so let's just, just keep going after this until, uh, until it's shaped. Well, that's pretty much one half, essentially fully shaped. It's really smooth. I've got a little bit of sanding to do in here, but not bad. And a little here where the, <clears throat> where the radii get really tight, where it gets kind of snug to get the sander in, it's tough to get to. Um, I've obviously sanded through to the plugs again, so to the pegs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to mix up a little epoxy soon. And, fill them. I think we'll just do that next. Um, all in all, I'm pleased with the shape I've got. It's, uh, it's working well. The spoke shave did a great job at really roughing in the shape. Um, it's, it's coming. I wish I hadn't gone through these. It's kind of bothersome, but I think I'm going to hold off on filling them until I finished sanding and filing and rasping all the other sides but and I think we're gonna call it a day today a day today um, yeah it came out pretty so far so far it's coming out pretty good this is the sculpted smoothness I was shooting for so that's happening nicely I hit a lot of the joinery which is kind of bothersome it's more than kind of bothersome it really bothers me but I think what that means is I'm going to do something something that <clears throat> excuse me, something to darken this up a bit. As much as I'd like to show off this quarter saw grain, I'm not that big of a fan of oak anyway to be too kind, uh, too hung up on being able to see the grain too well. I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna figure out what I'm going to do there. Um, I found another spot here, so I've literally hit every one of them. This one I hit both. This one I hit all three. This one I've just hit this one, and this one I just hit here. And this one I hit up here. Nicely, eh? Anyway, yeah, we're going to call this for the day <clears throat> and uh, pick it back up tomorrow.